Alrighty guys, welcome back to another chess lesson and in this series we are going to be covering the Slav defense. Now the Slav defense is actually one of the most popular defenses to the Queen's Gambit, which is of course one of the most popular chess openings for white. And since we are going to be learning this from the black perspective, I'm going to go ahead and flip my board and there we go. So the Queen's Gambit is of course the opening moves d4. And then black is going to reply with d5. Again, this is just the most common opening uh, response to d4. Nothing really specific to do with the Slav defense right now. This is just uh, generic chess. It doesn't change in the Slav. And now the queen's gambit is signified by the move c2 to c4. So whenever white does this, Again, this is called the Queen's Gambit. What they're essentially trying to get you to do is to bite on this pawn and at least do some other benefits, but those should be really covered in a Queen's Gambit series. But for now, I just want to mention that it's typically not the best idea to take this gambit or to take this pawn right here. So if we don't take it and we don't want to get our pawn captured, we need to defend this in some kind of way. So a defense that you guys may be familiar with is the Queen's Gambit decline, where essentially black takes her pawn on e7 and pushes it out to e6. So then we have a nice pawn chain here, and this pawn is protecting this pawn. Everything looks good. However, there is one issue with moving your pawn out here, and that is your light square bishop is blocked in. So we really don't want this light server bishop blocked in the pawn chain. So another option that we have is, dun dun dun, you guys, you guys can probably guess, it's the Slav defense. And that entails, instead of moving the e-pawn, we're actually going to protect our pawn on d5 with our c-pawn. So c6, just like that. So aside from just protecting this d5 pawn and allowing our light square bishop a nice open juicy lane we also have control over the b5 square and just take note of this because this is actually going to be a very important square in the game later on so from here the most common moves are actually i don't even need to uh tell you guys if i go over to openings uh this is essentially all the games that chess.com has recorded so the most common response from white after this is just knight to f3 and then black knight to f6 again this isn't really part of the defense it's just standard chess uh opening theory all black is trying to do with this move is essentially develop a knight towards the center and also control e4 and defend d5 as well and from here white's standard reply as you can see is knight to c3 so now let me hop back in my little board editor right here. And before we just continue with the main line, I want to point out one mistake that whenever people are first learning the Slav defense, they tend to make this a lot. So I want to go over it to show you guys why and how you should avoid it. And that is this. Like I said, one of the key benefits in the Slav defense versus the Queen's Gambit decline is that our bishop has a nice open juicy lane. Now with this bishop, we usually want to develop them to, it depends in a couple of different variations, but somewhere uh, g4 and f5 are the most popular development points. So that is ideally where the bishop wants to be the majority of the time. However, I will caution you, you do not want to bring your bishop out too early because if you do, this is going to leave b7 vulnerable. So we'll actually take a look at doing that right now. So let's say that we do make this mistake and decide to bring our bishop out. Let's just say we'll put him on a f5. Okay, looks like a pretty good square. This pawn chain looks pretty solid. All right, what can go wrong? Well, if you take note, b7, like I said, is unprotected. So now what white can do is they have a little uh, tricky plan. They can actually decide to capture on c5 of course, what we want to do is just recapture on c5. And at this point in time, they can take their queen and move it out to b3. So whenever white moves their queen out to b3, look at this. They are now attacking this pawn, which is undefended. They already had an attacker on this pawn. And they now have another attacker with their queen. 
Now since our pawn is under attack and the bishop that was supposed to be defending it is off in the middle of the board doing who knows what, we need to defend it in some kind of way if we don't just want to lose material and have our rook under attack. So we have a couple options. We can move our queen over either to c7 or c8. But whenever that happens, then it leaves this pawn vulnerable right here. Of course, we can just snag it up and black can't recapture if they do. Then we just take with the queen and I mean, we are down material, our bishops attacked, uh, not a very good plan. Now there are some other possibilities, including if they move their queen out here and we have our bishop out on f5, then we can just go ahead and bring it back. But then, I mean, white can just continue development and look at this uh, stage right now in the game. White has a ton of development. I don't even want to make those red because this is, you know, a pretty good position for white. We have a bunch of pieces on the back rank and only a knight and a really vulnerable uh, pawn sticking out there. So again, what we want to do is we want to avoid this scenario by essentially not bringing our bishop out too early. All right, so if we go back to the fourth move, with all that in mind, we know that moving our bishop out right now is just a really bad idea. So what are our other options? Well, the best move in this case scenario is actually just to capture on c4. So right now, you notice that this pawn is undefended as it usually is in the early stages of the queen's gambit. So we can actually take this right now. Now white's idea is generally to move this pawn up either to e3 or e4. Let's just say it goes to e4. And once they do that, they pretty much unleash this bishop and it can now recapture this pawn on c4. However, since we have this pawn on c6, and remember I said that this b5 square that it controls is going to be critical later in the game. This is why, because now after they bump up their pawn to e4, we can respond by taking our pawn and moving it to b5. So what this does is it protects our pawn on c4. So the ultimate plan that white had is kind of foiled. Now white is actually going to have a very difficult time of capturing this pawn on c4. And let's say they do something like try to take their a pawn and move it to a4. And this is actually a pretty common technique in the queen's gambit because what they essentially try to do is add another attacker to this square right here, hoping we would free something up and then this pawn would be vulnerable once this one is gone. However, at this point in time, what we can do is we can just take our b5 pawn and move it up to b4, therefore attacking this knight. Now, of course, if white doesn't want to lose its knight, which I'm guessing they don't, they have to retreat it or move it away. And whenever they do that, look at what happened. They now freed up the protection on e4. So now this pawn is vulnerable and we can start attacking from there. So pretty awesome. And again, there are a lot of different variations, a lot of different responses. White is not going to respond this way the entire time. And in the future videos in this series, we're gonna be going over some of the more common ones. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next video.